day two of TMEA. And today was a little bit of a slower day um, based off of just the fun of day one. To be honest, all I did today was I attended a clinic where this gentleman was talking about what judges are thinking about. If we're talking about specifically like drum majors, I want them to know like, while you are conducting, this is what you can give to get that one extra point out for the ensemble or whatever it is. So I'm always applying something to teach my drum majors and as well as a leadership perspective, like the leadership team and the section leader should know like, okay, what are judges looking for when they see us perform? So that's what I did today. We just finished some food. I'm obviously here with my good old colleague, Hi. Dina Lena. <laughs> what did you do today? So today, of course, got up, did this you look great. artwork, you, all of this yeah, you look fun stunned. stuff. It takes so much time. It does. The outfit yes. today. Come on, Faye. I'm proud of the outfit. <laughs> look at you. Oh my like, God. Really cute shoes, right? <laughs> Biggest fan, number one. I love that. <laughs> my first session today was titled Preventing Sexual Misconduct in Music Education, which is unfortunately an epidemic right now that's happening in school systems. There's sexual misconduct happening from all educators, but unfortunately from studies that have been done, there is a disproportionate amount, like ratio-wise, from music educators especially because of the environments that music education naturally brings in. You get more one-on-one -on -one time with students. Um, it's more isolated. You have them for years at a time, three, four years. It was a really important session. It was a beautiful presentation. And it definitely is something that those of us who are not a part of the issue should be doing something to actively watch out for what are the signs, what are we seeing, what's happening, and also calling out people that we see and being like, hey, like, what's going on? Um, so we can hopefully stop these things from happening because at the end of the day, our job is to be there for our students and to protect and care for our students. There you go, period. And then after that, I went to one entitled Performance Confidence, Developing Healthy Thoughts and Practices. So this one was absolutely fascinating. It went a lot around how to manage your fears, self-talk, um, talked about power poses, talked about how based on human nature, you will like react to things in certain ways. So whenever you have anxiety and you're like having a performance, how you think about things before the performance itself, how, when you're in it, what you're doing, all of your self-talk will essentially show itself in your performances all the time. There, again, this was super fascinating. They went over a lot of things about like how to speak to yourself, how to refer to yourself, situations, stuff like that. Um, you know, like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'm not good enough for this versus going into, oh, I need to get better at this. I need to practice this. They did some power poses and two of them, really fun. Yes, exactly. One of them, this one and another one was this. Oh. Uh, there's a ton of really cool exercises they did with us where one of them was you cross your feet, you wrap your arms, you make yourself feel as small as you can and you will feel like even if you don't squeeze yourself at all like you just go into the position yeah. you will feel the like tension, the fear kind of go into your body because those levels in your brain, those chemicals are starting to build and whenever you do this pose or something similar, like any of these poses, um, by the way, we are in a food court mall and I am doing this. We don't um, care. They can mind their business. Um, but whenever you do this, it actually raises your testosterone levels and decreases your cortisol levels. So it's it helps a lot. And yeah. uh, do that for about two minutes before a performance. It's going to make you feel so much more confident. There's a ton of research that they, they put into it. It was incredible. That's important, especially for like drum majors and stuff where, you know, the anxiety is like you got to be perfect or if you mess up a conducting pattern, you are messing up the entire ensemble. So it's important that you have something of a foundation to kind of help you as you go into that performance. I have one more thing. Yeah. I'm going to need your help with this one. I just need your help. Um, okay, let's see. Push down on my arm as hard as you can. Pushing? As hard as you can. Come on, Jared. <laughs> he has more in him. <laughs> they gave me the examples of when you say something negative about yourself, like 
I can't do this, I'm not able to, I don't deserve to be here. And then you switch the mindset immediately over to, I'm trying my best, I am putting in effort and maintaining it, I deserve to, like it What kind of gym do you go to? It, <laughs> it, um, you can try this out with other people, but your brain is literally saying those connections through the synopsis. Because your brain will only do what it's told to do. Uh, they also had, a portion of their presentation that they called the obedient mind. I can't remember exactly what it was, mm -hmm. but the mind will listen and follow whatever you tell it to do. And they can't, it doesn't differentiate between like, oh my God, I'm gonna mess up as being worried about messing up. It's gonna think, okay, I'm gonna make you mess up. Mm -hmm. Versus if you rewire that thinking to, I need to do this to get this section correctly, or I'm going to breathe here. I'm gonna feel that breath in my body. Your brain will also think, huh, Let's find it out. Mm -hmm. So it was a fascinating section. I went up to one of the presenters after. They were both from Boston College. I went up to one of them, almost cried because I I have experienced uh, a lot of audition anxiety over the last few years, and I just want to thank them because I felt like I got a lot of relief and good information from that session. Did you? I learned teacher. so much today. It was great. <laughs> there was a, this has been a phenomenal little trip. And we also I got Italian food in the like river walk. Oh yeah, court. we just finished it up I saw I actually was in the exhibit hall and I saw Dina and I was like oh thank god I have a friend to yeah. finally <laughs> eat lunch with because I was hungry I was starving I was literally going to eat a horse type of deal well I'm about to go see what my friends are doing you have friends I do have friends that's oh. why you're sitting with me and eating lunch yeah I don't see anyone do you goodbye <laughs> It's a long line. It was a long line, but we got here just in time. Show them, show them how close we are to the front. We're close to the door. Just in time. It is. Let me get a quick vlog footage of it. They got a lot of stuff, and look at that. They even got an indention. They got an indention of it. It's a bunch of beautiful program. Okay, here we are. It is the three Silent Command instructors, and we're here to watch who again? Ebrin. Ebrin High School 6A Honor Band. Yes. The yeah. fact that there's a six trips me out, but I mean, there's so many people here. We're on the very top. This is luxury style. So there they are. They're performing right down there. So, we're, yeah, literally jumped over railings <laughs> to get over here. So we're just going to witness it and we'll film our reaction.